Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We have a Storm 2410 snow thrower. I'm gonna show you how to operate it. First thing we wanna do is check the oil, and this one's gonna be a little tricky because the oil's so clean, but oil dip dipstick is here. It's, this is actually a, a half turn, and that's all you have to do to get this out. Now you can put this dipstick in backwards, so I'll just make sure, I, or the dipstick, yeah, so I just wanna show you. There's two dots, okay? You have the higher dot and the lower dot. This oil is brand new, so it's very clean. You just wanna make sure you're in the right around the upper dot and you just want to wipe it off now what i was saying earlier is that it has two little dots on this one on one side and one dot on the other side so the throat right here has two little dots on one side and one little dot on the other side and they're actually uh, cutaways and this one has divots on the on the uh dipstick side so you just want to make sure you get them in the right spots i've seen people put them in backwards and actually get stuck you just want to set it down in on there give it a half turn take it out and then check it, make sure it's within the dots. This one here is pretty much, uh, it looks like it actually might be a little bit on the high side. Put it back in. You don't wanna have it too much higher than that because you don't wanna overfill them. They'll actually start blowing white smoke. Okay, so we got the uh, oils checked, fuel goes here. And basically I would suggest high test fuel for everybody, that's just my opinion, but the high test fuel is much better gas. You have a couple uh, handles up here. The first handle on this side is for your drive. The, other, the left hand side is for your auger, okay? Now it does have instructions right here. It shows you which one's the drive and which one's the auger. Just keep that in mind which ones are which when you're using them. And it tells you here pretty much how to start the machine also. But since we got everything checked out for the gas and oil, we're gonna go over to our levers and knobs down here. The first one here on top is a choke lever and it says run. And then it comes back up here and says choke. So when a choke is on, it's going to be on choke. And when it's on run, that means the choke is off. All right. You have a primer bulb, which is uh, used for very cold conditions. Anything 32 and below, I mean 32 degrees or below, it's going to be very cold. So you prime it a couple times before you start it. This is your on and off key. All right. If you take this key out for any reason, you will not be able to start your machine. You have to have that key in before it'll run. Now, I recommend drilling a hole through that key putting a string to it and tying it to your handlebar so you don't ever lose this key out in the snow or something. You drop it in the snow or if it pops out in the snow, you're not gonna find it. But the key has to be in. You don't necessarily have to take this key out ever because you have stop down here. This is your lever for your throttle. Right, you have stop, turtle, and rabbit. Well, of course, rabbit is the fast speed and all the way down to idle, which we're never gonna use that, not when you're blowing snow. And then you turn it all the way down to off and that's all we have to stop. So this key here, you don't really necessarily need it but it's there. Um, it could also, it prevents anybody from starting it if you take it out, which is nice. Um, as far as starting it goes, all the way up on rabbit and then take it back just a little bit. I usually start on about three quarter throttle. You're gonna prime it a couple times and you're gonna turn the choke on. All right, I didn't prime it yet because I wanna show you the next step is to, you should get, with this one is electric start. So it should come with a electric start cable. The electric start cable is only seven to ten feet i think most of them are seven eight nine ten feet do not go over this cable this the, the, as far as the length goes the cable should come with the machine all right and we're just you want to plug it into a regular outlet do not plug it into an extension cord you just want to stay with the seven feet that you have or eight feet or whatever it was when it came with the machine do not overextend the cord because what happens is it lowers the draw of electricity to the starter and you can burn up the starter this has a three prong outlet. This is the starter right here. Here's your starter button. Basically it's just push on, go, and that's pretty much it. Plug in your extension cord. Now, all this does is it spins the engine. That's all a starter does. It doesn't do anything to help you start it other than it spins the engine faster. When it's really cold outside, you have, your oil gets pretty thick. So when you pull start it with this, this is when you already had it running, you run out of gas, you're out in the middle of the field or something, or out in the middle of your driveway and you want to fill it up with gas, fill it up with gas, and then you can pull start right away. This is basically when your initial get-go, when the oil's thick and you have it up near the house and you have electricity you know, up near the house or whatever and you're in shed and then you can just push the button and it'll spin the engine over fast because these do need to spin up pretty quickly to start them fairly easily. All right, so back to our controls again. Like I said, up to fast and i have it a little bit off of real fast just because i don't like to start machines at full throttle we have the choke is now on all right and i'm also going to prime the bulb so choke is on i'm going to prime the bulb once now we're in warm weather here so twice probably shouldn't even need that three-quarter throttle 
I'm gonna come back around and, and push the button. Once this starts up, you're gonna take the choke off or at least pay, take it down a half. Okay, so once it starts up and I took the choke off, now sometimes in cold weather, it's gonna to wanna to try to stop just right off the bat. It'll run and stop, run and stop. So what you want to do is you can either do a couple different things. You can run in a half choke until it warms up and then make sure you take it off choke. If you're ever running a machine on choke, if it's halfway and it's running smooth at choke after it's warmed up, you have a carburetor problem. That's a different video. But just make sure when it's after it's warmed up, you're running off choke so you're not choking to death. And you can all number two, you can always prime it a few times while it's while it's trying to trying to stop itself. Like it'll try to run and stop. But basically, again, choke on, prime it two or three times, throttle all the way up to fast, a little bit off of there. Now, granted, when you're ready to blow snow, you want it all the way up on fast, but as far as starting conditions go, um, and then push the button, start it up. And as you can see, after I started it, I did take the choke to put it into the off position. Then you gotta remember, take your electric cord out of your starter here, and wrap it back up out of the way. You will not need that. Hopefully, again, do not pull out 100 feet of cord if you're stuck at the end of your driveway and it stopped running because you ran out of gas. Fill it up with gas. You can always start it the same same way. Choke on, prime it, and you have a pull cord right here. As far as uh, like I said about the operation, and everything you do also have. You have your self propel drive here, you have your auger drive here. This is your two speed reverse, and you're also your five and six speeds forward. That's that's how it operates, the, uh, how fast you're going forward and backward. You also have your control for your chute left and right. Okay, so, so, so. You also have your, you have an adjustment here for when the snow blows out of the out of the chute here you can i usually try to blow it as high as i can but it depends if you have neighbors or whatever but you just loosen up one knob here and then this will move up and down and just tighten up this wing nut here this knob and now keep it from going anywhere you have this handle here which actually helps if you ever get it clogged that's why it's there it's designed to get in here and unclog the chute it's to keep 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 people's hands from going inside here and that just locks right here I usually take, I have one of these, I took mine off just so I wouldn't lose it and run it over when I was blowing snow, but that's where they're holding things. As far as the front of this machine goes, this is where your augers are. And the big thing about these guys is, I don't know if you can see in here because it's kind of dark, but there's a, let's see if we get some light. There's actually shear pins. We have a shear pin here. We got a shear pin over here. We got one right here and one right here. So this one actually has four shear pins. And they will shear and they're designed to shear all right if they do shear you usually have a couple with the kit when you bought the machine you just have to replace them it's a little bit tough when there's snow packed up inside there uh, but all your augers should all be running if you ever see one of these augers not spinning uh, that usually means you have a bad shear pin and just remember when you're blowing snow i always tell people to have the auger handle down until you see all the snow come out the chute and be done. Like nothing, don't stop your auger before all the snow's out because that'll obviously have a clog real quick. We live in the east side of uh, Pennsylvania and it gets pretty heavy snow here. We don't have a whole lot of, of fluff. It's a lot heavier and it gets clogged up a lot in here. And I've noticed if you can just keep your auger handle down until all the snow is out, then you let the auger up to stop your auger. That'll help eliminate a lot of problems with the uh, clogging. And also silicone spray, spray some silicone spray in here and also in your augers. And that also helps with the non-stick. It really helps a lot as far as keeping the snow from sticking inside the machine. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped you get this thing started. Give me a thumbs up if you like it and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.